Hi, this is Dr. Knight again, and we're going to go through a method of graphing the binomial distribution using the TI-83. We'll also talk about some problems which are binomial probability distribution questions and how to use the graph as well as other commands on the TI-83 to answer probability questions based on the binomial probability distribution. The first thing we'll do is graph the binomial distribution that would represent a 10 question true-false test. And after doing that, we'll look at different ways of answering the question as to the probability of passing the test if you simply guessed on every question. So we'll call up the TI-83. And now with the TI-83 on the screen, we're going to do the following. We're going to go to the Stat Edit menu. And in the List 1, we will input, starting with the number 0, the number is going from 0 to 10. And what we're looking at in list 1 are the events which correspond to getting problems correct. So 0 would mean that we took the test and we got none correct. The 1 means we got only 1 of 10 correct. And so forth until the last entry which would correspond to taking a true-false test, guessing, and getting all 10 correct. So simply put the numbers 0 through 10 in list 1. In list 2, we're going to go to the list 2 title, and this will allow us to input a formula on the formula bar for list 2. And the formula we're going to write is the following. We're going to take 100 and multiply by the binomial probability density function and that's found under the distribution key. So second function distribution and if we use the up arrow, we're going to go to the number 0, which is the binomial probability density function, or PDF. Notice there's also a binomial CDF, which is the cumulative density function, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. So select out 0. And now the syntax for the binomial probability density function is that we will first put in the number of problems on the test, which was 10. Next, we'll follow that with the probability of getting any problem right. And on a true-false test, where every problem is a true-false, the probability of guessing and getting any one right is simply 0.5 and now a comma, and then L1. And what this is going to do, putting L1 here, is look at the numbers in L1, starting with the number 0, going through to number 10, and give us the probability of those separate events. Those probabilities will be a decimal, and for purposes of graphing, we multiplied by 100, and that's why the 100 times the binomial probability density function. Now we'll just simply hit enter, and here is our list of probabilities. So the probability of getting a 0 is 0.09766%, or approximately one-tenth of one percent. 
it would be pretty hard to guess uh, on a 10 question true false test and get them all wrong. And if we look as we go along, the probability of getting one right is about 1%. Of getting two right is about 4.4%. The probability of getting three right, about 11.7%, and so forth. And if we scroll down, we'll see the rest of the probabilities. And you can see the probability of getting all 10 right was approximately 0.1%, very much like getting all wrong. Now to graph this, to see the histogram that represents the histogram representing the binomial probability density function for this particular question, we're going to go to the zoom 9 command and we get this initial histogram. We're going to make modifications to the window and the modifications we'll make in the following way. We're going to make the 0 a negative 0.5 and we're going to make the x scale, the third line, the number 1. And now hit graph. And now we see our graph looks very much like a normal distribution. If we use the trace function, we see that for the first class, and that's a class with a minimum of negative 0.5, a maximum of positive 0.5, and the height of the bar corresponds to n, which is the percentage of 0.5. 097656. And that would be the probability of taking the test, guessing on every problem, and getting all 10 problems wrong. Using the right arrow, we can see this is the number between 0.5 and 1.5, in other words, 1 and this is the probability of getting one correct and that probability is approximately one percent. If we then use the right arrow to go to the class which has a minimum of 1.5, maximum of 2.5, so this would be two, the probability of getting two right is approximately 4.4 percent and so forth and so on and if we consider what a passing grade would be, it would have to be starting with this class where the minimum is 6.5, the maximum is 7.5, and the percentage approximately 11.7% likelihood of, giving, of getting 7 right. If we consider what it takes to pass, generally a 70%, then the probability of getting 7 correct plus the probability of getting 8 correct, which is approximately 4.4 again, and notice that the minimum and maximum of that class, 7.5 to 8.5, gives us 8 as our number correct. 9, and finally 10. So the probability of passing would be the addition of these 0 0.097656 and this probability, 0 0.97 and so forth, and this probability, and finally the probability of getting 7 correct. And if we add those probabilities together, we get the following, that the probability of passing is approximately 